in life. So yeah, just copy who's getting ahead. Crowdcube, I've got a website, techtograat.com, which is completely free resources on how to invest and how to get better. Okay, do I know Philip Richards? I don't. So yeah, the, the, the techtograat.com website, I've put all the resources of all the funding sources in the UK for anybody in business and any company, everything from grants to loans to finance for you know, trade finance and all of that kind of stuff. So I highly recommend that as well as a, as a website. Any advice to a 16-year-old aspiring banker? Well, it's good that you're aspiring. I'm not sure... I mean, look, let me put it this way. If I was 16, I'd want to be an entrepreneur. I want to, you know, if I, as I didn't have a silver spoon in my mouth, I'd want to do well for my family and get ahead. So aspiration, all good. What I would say is look outside the conventional. Look also at, look also at other careers. And I always talk about financial technology as well. Banking's changing. Look who's getting funded. Apply to jobs to those. That's what I'd say in terms of aspiring banker. If it's banking for the money, as opposed to because you love banking, who the hell at 16 loves banking? Or at any age, you know, who says I want to be an auditor? You do it because it's a safe, secure job and it'll earn money and it'll help your family get ahead. Uh, if those are the reasons, then great. I, I was an aspiring barrister and, and I loved it because I loved the law and I loved what it meant. I don't know with banking why somebody would love to be in banking. You know, oh, I love money. I mean, that might be a reason, but... So I'd say look around beyond that, look well beyond that as well. Thank you very much for your kind comments. If it's purely money, look, that's fine because you know you want to earn the money. Just be careful not to sell your soul. So get out at a certain age, you know, accumulate it for ten years. But what I would suggest when you're in banking is make the networks, make the connections, start planning and plotting what you're going to do. I used to have a TV show on Bloomberg TV. Michael Bloomberg set that up once he was fired from the bank, I forgot which bank he was at, Salomon Brothers, and he set up Bloomberg, and he was about 45 and got sacked, so always have plan, plan B, when you're going to jump, and, and, and there's nothing wrong with doing it for the money, you know, I grew up in Leeds, like I said, no silver spoon in my mouth, so the money was a reason to go into law, that's why. What would I advise in terms of getting work experience for this summer? you've left it a bit late is what I would advise what I'd say on the work experience is I've created a virtual internship because there's been a whole bunch of people who said to me look I couldn't get you know I don't know someone I don't know what to do how about to go about it so I create a virtual internship and you can put it on your CV and it's the links are in the bio and it allows anybody from anywhere in the world to go through all my free videos advice mentoring content on finance and I've had a few people get jobs including one at JP Morgan who've been on it you'll be able to put on your CV FCA regulated asset manager you can put you are working with me because I'm the one teaching you all of it and if you if your employer asks for a reference I'm able to look at the back end of the program and see oh they've actually completed it if you register and haven't done a single thing then obviously don't put it down that you were turned with me because I'll be able to see it okay and the links are in the bio for that advice to graduate who doesn't have any formal experience or aspires to join consultancy or banking i'd say the same with 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 the graduate is look at the cvs of the people already there look at those cvs on linkedin look to see what they've done at those various banks or consultancies that are your hit list so make your hit list and then look at about 50 of those biogs see what they've done and try and copy and mimic those cvs because clearly those are things of value and that's the direction you should be going in i think efinancialcareers.com is helpful as well what fintech jobs in banking would you recommend? I'll give you an example. Follow the money. So recently, there's a company called Shares. They're all over TikTok. You see them advertising everywhere. They just raised 30 million. You can Google it. Shares, Financial Times, raised 30 million. I'd follow that because I'd follow the money and say, well, if they've raised 30 million, they're probably going to pay good salaries rather than, say, free trade, who are letting people off. If they're sort of getting rid of people, then what's the point of joining that firm? Okay, you know, so what I would say is find the ones who are raising the money and always follow the money because it makes your job more secure and probably makes the pay even better. And that's if you're after pay. This is if, you know, you're not at the entrepreneur stage yet and want to do your own business and so on, which might come later. What career is ideal for someone purely chasing money but has an interest in politics, economics and business? What, and look, there's nothing wrong with chasing money. You know, my uncle used to sweep floors at Morrison, became a general manager, and then built an empire of homes, resi- uh, nursing homes, restaurants, nightclubs, hotels. But he had to get the money first, and you have to do whatever the hell it takes. And I admire people who do that. And, and, and so what I would say is 
chasing the money is absolutely nothing wrong with it. It's how social mobility happens. And I'd say go for the companies which have just raised money. You'll find the information on things like Google News. You'll find it on Financial Times. Whoever's raised the money, apply for jobs to them. Look on Crowdcube, see who's raised money there. There'll be companies who've raised a few million. They'll be hiring because they've raised money. It's what they've raised the money for. It's identity management on behalf of big banks. Good experience. ID management. I think you mean investment management? Just explain that one again. Thoughts on going through ACCA, ACCA to get into financial services. Yeah, it's a, you know, people often ask me, should I do these exams to get into this course? Again, go on LinkedIn, look at the CVs of the people at the places you want to work, who've got the jobs already of the jobs you want, and then see if they got those qualifications. In fact, you can even reach out to them. If they're first or second year olds, they should help. And one of the ways, I did some research recently for a TEDx talk I gave which was called, If You're So Clever, Why Aren't You Rich? And in that, I read a lot of academic research on what makes people successful. And one of the things was they had relationships and bonds with people uh, because they had common interests. And so find societies where you can have a common interest. For instance, for me, Chatham House International Relations, I sat on the board of that and it made a huge difference because of the people I connected to and met because we had something in common, international relations. It just so happened they also happened to be in the city. All the Indus entrepreneurs, we had a common interest. They were in entrepreneurship, but they were billionaires, so they invested in my business. So similarly, find those networks. I'm chairman of the City Hindu Network, so if you happen to be pro-Hindu, then that might help because that'll be a common interest. You might have a church-based society in the city, you know, city, city Christians, let's put it that way, or city Muslims or city Sikhs. City seeks exist. When you have a common interest somewhere else, but you've also got that interest in the city, you often get networks which have formed deeper relationships. Did you bang many birds when you were in your 20s? No, I respected women, and, and therefore, whilst I had many offers, I didn't think it was a decent thing to do. I also had a lot of self respect, and I was brought up with a degree of character and, as I said, self respect, so I didn't actually bang birds as you put it it also made me realize that if i did have that kind of attitude in one area sooner or later you're going to run out of friends people who might like you or respect you and you really don't want to be doing things which your parents would sort of look down on you at or at least people whose respect you'd value would look down upon you at because in the end ultimately success comes down to the respect that you earn from people whose values matter so for me that banging birds as you put it really would have been a bit of a sleazy probably end up in prison kind of thing to do so not really one for me what do you think about scottish independence she funnily enough i'm out here a friend's who happens to be scottish a friend's birthday party yesterday and he's scottish and absolutely loved the scots and we were just talking about how much contribution to philosophy and economics and global development they've they've been part of and i therefore hope as any treasure that you possess, I possess, or a part of, or can be linked to, I hope to can remain connected to them through the United Kingdom. That's what I think about it. Or I think they're incredible people, and, and you know, if I had an incredible member of my family, I wouldn't want them to be more distant from me. I'd want them to be remain close to me. So that's my uh, answer. I grew up poor, so could only study at my local near home. I got a first class would I have a chance? Yes, you would have a chance. You know why? And it's something I was thinking about earlier. I was on a boat earlier with a friend and he left school with not very good qualifications and went to London with just about £70 in his pocket and he needed to make money. And I admired that. And I thought to myself, you know what? I've got people I employ who've got first class degrees and I've got people I employ who've scraped their way up and I respect both of them. And, and it's the skills that they bring and the fighting spirit. And that's what I want. I don't care whether you uh, won or lost what I care about is well you're a fighter and it's the fighting part that matters the most what's your favorite way to eat an egg none of them because I'm vegan so it really wouldn't make much sense in terms of eating an egg but you know what I had a vegan omelet and I ate it the conventional way through the mouth I don't know how you eat yours can you break into investment banking after working at one of the big four? I would have thought so. You'd need to speak to human resources. There's so a lot of people on my TikToks who want to break into investment banking. I assume for the money. And if it's for the money, as I said earlier, find the companies who are hiring and willing to pay through Crowdcube, through LinkedIn, through newspaper reports and apply for those jobs. They might not be the conventional investment banking jobs. You know, your Goldman Sachs and the like. It might be at challenger banks. It might be elsewhere, but the money may be good and it may be a stepping stone to, I don't know, Silicon Valley. Look, if you're young, 
why would you not even think about applying to tech companies and and I don't mean Google and all the rest of it have a look at various new companies that are coming along and becoming billion dollar companies what's my IQ I did an IQ test when I was at the bar I'm not in the top one percent I'm in the top one and a half percent now the bad news is that wealth and IQ are correlated as you'd expect income and IQ do have some degree of correlation however at the extremities when you're in the top one percent the correlation drops off and actually is negative in other words the extremely clever tend to be extremely poor so thankfully I'm not in the top one percent I'm just in the top one and a half percent which is a sweet spot to be because it maximizes your income and wealth Israel or Palestine what a question both I'm afraid or I'm not afraid uh, both both I'm I, I in a way I don't have a what you might say a dog in the fight but I do the humanity angle and I wish people of good will of good will on both sides well I think some of the things that I've read in the papers which are being done in the name of the state of Israel not characteristic of what people of goodwill who are Israeli would want to see done in their name and some of and, and equally on the Palestinian side if you read the Hamas constitution I find it repulsive and inexcusable so uh, look I'm neither Jewish or Muslim so it's not a predetermined thing I'm neither Israeli or Palestinian so it's not a so I'm trying to be objective as possible I do believe Palestinian people should have a date of their own but Israel is also equally here to stay and I believe that that state is not going to be removed or eradicated or wiped out but I believe in justice when you see those horrible pictures of poor children in Palestine and how they're treated of course it would drive you mad when you see pictures of Jewish children Israeli children being harmed children regardless of religion regardless of where they're from and and I don't want to say oh well you brought it on yourself and all of this I hope they come to an amicable agreement and a settlement which is peaceful and fair to both sides that's why Alpesh why is everything priced in not sure it is does the hedge fund manager we in the pool no they don't uh, that's how they get to where they are how much can you earn in PE I think the sky's the limit I own my own firm and so we set our own salary and I get paid peanuts because I'm a teetotal vegetarian so I don't get paid much by myself in my own firm because what the hell am I a teetotal vegetarian with a bicycle I had three cars I gave one to my wife one to my dad one to my uncles I don't even have a car now uh, my bike costs 100 pounds because if it gets nicked who cares so I don't like having expensive pumps how much can you earn I bel- you can look up salaries it'll be somewhere google it I don't know but how much do I earn next to nothing what places would you recommend attending to find high net worth clients? Look, I'll tell you where it was for me. It was the, it, it was the Indus Entrepreneurs, T-I-E dot org. Have a look at that. It was basically organizations which have another common interest. You know, some people, you know the reason why people said, oh, it's the golf club, it's the golf club. Because people who are interested in golf also happen to be wealthy. It wasn't. It, it, and that golf interest made friends or in the case of Donald Trump it was some you know club I can't remember the name of the club in New York and wealthy people were there so if you've got another interest alongside that so it's not that you directly target wealth it's that you directly target the other interest where wealth hangs out best tips for breaking into investment management as a graduate I think I answered that I'm afraid earlier can you see a property crash coming? Well, I think if interest rates went to 7%, yeah, but I think we've learned from what happened in the early 90s that don't make sharp rises in interest rates on that. So if I ask you, what do you think about the Northern Ireland Protocol Bill? I've not read that bill in detail, I'm afraid, so I can't comment. I know there's some significant problems around it, both for the unionists and the other side Sinn Féin so I, I really I don't think I can give a, a, a proper comment on the Northern Ireland Protocol Bill without reading it properly I used to be a barrister so I do like to read legislation in detail before I comment is engineering a valuable degree yes we hired an engineer a lady called Kanira Shah 
you can see her on um, LinkedIn, um, out of Imperial. And as an engineer, she was phenomenal for us because she could go visit the, we invest in wind farms in the private equity side. She could go visit Romania and the like and climb up wind farms and do the Excel spreadsheets and everything else. I'm 19, starting at PwC, well done, in tax. The ultimate goal will, ooh, then it dropped off. I did tax law as part of my law degree. It's very useful. And PwC, we're doing a, as chairman of the City Hindus Network, we're doing an event with PwC later in the year. You're more than welcome. People say, do you have to be a Hindu? No. <laughs> Just if you don't like them, then it'll be a problem. So uh, advisor for a teenager to get ahead of the bell curve. Get the skills others don't and which are valuable. Work out what those skills are. Well, I'd say public speaking is incredibly important and the ability to write well. You would be shocked how few people can write a bloody report succinct. So learn about writing. I used to write a column in the Financial Times and it taught me how to be succinct, get to the point, learn about how to write the opening paragraph with a hook without making it clickbait. So do those things and those are skills which are needed the ability to speak well eloquence brevity uh, learn about tone cadence pitch pace those things are important learn about rhetoric actually there you go if you want to get ahead in any career whatever age you are learn about rhetoric look at my links in my bio that you'll find and you'll find those as well does your iq matter i think i answered that earlier didn't i does your iq matter yes it does it does matter what hindu caste are you the the caste is well i'm not a priest as you can tell i'm in a pool i think we're one down from that i believe where is whoa nearly drowned where is this i'm in my bed getting low iq vibes you probably are getting low iq vibes if you're looking at you know, if you're saying things like that but you know i'm not sure oh by the way the good news is whilst iq can't be improved the the things which employers want aren't actually iq again the research i did for my tedx talk were about personality related issues perseverance strength of character determination those things can be improved and there's research to show not only can they be improved they're the things that people want and are more correlated to wealth than iq alone so that might be better how can you invest with me if you're a pension fund we only take institutional money what books do you recommend oh well look at the links in my bio i've got some free downloads of various books that i like in finance and investing and they're all good what's a hedge fund it's a company which buys thing buys shares in my case for a low price and then sells them for a higher price a bit like a supermarket but for stocks and then we share the profits with the people who gave us the money to buy the shares in the first place that's what it is it's the simplest explanation i can think of what industries are going to see the most upside in the next five years wish i could tell you what i tend to do is i follow trends based on where the money's going and at the moment there's a lot of money going in ai and cyber will they succeed or not in a way it doesn't matter what matters is if you're looking for a job then that's the place you want to go to where can i get funding for my business brilliant question i've made an entire list of every single source of funding in the uk from grants to loans to equity to crowdfunding on my website and the links are in the bio but it's also it's called tech to great.com it's all free information as well why not take my dollars i'm an accredited investor you don't have enough of them i'm afraid that's why so a hedge fund like ours will want big checks otherwise it's not worth our time it's not worth our time energy and resource so we want people writing 10 million dollar checks because by the time we get you a return and take our cut, it's not worth it if you've only got a small amount of money. And that's why we don't take money from accredited investors. We take it from institutions like family offices, such as that. Can anyone create a hedge fund? Yep, they've got to be regulated, which means, in our case, FCA regulated, which means you've got to pass certain criteria. Those are the main reasons. What is PE? Private equity. Brother, I'm really into Forex. How scalable is it? Depends what you mean into forex and, and scalability but you probably want a business plan if you want a business plan have a look at websites like crowdcube and see which businesses get funded and what their pitch decks look like if you want to know what a pitch deck is and what a good one is anything uh, there's a lot of stuff on the internet on that when rscc finds useful for hedge funds they're not well for me they're not what is private equity don't worry about it marbeck 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 i don't know what marbeck means okay any other questions Anybody else has? Happy to answer. What's the most important skills for a CEO? 
In terms of, if we take leadership, I would say the ability to convince people of a vision make them energized, excited, make them passionate. I'll give you the best example of that that I've seen, or one of the best ones. There's a website called allaboutstevejobs.com, allaboutstevejobs.com. He started off in the 80s talking about how he wanted to make a thing which allowed you to listen to lots of music. He ended up by saying, this thing you hand, have in your hand will make you happier. In other words, he was able to inspire people with a vision, a purpose, such that they would queue up all night for the damn thing and that his employees would work 24-7 for that piece of glass, metal and plastic. That is probably the greatest skill of a CEO, the ability to inspire others by giving them a purpose, by giving them drive, and I think that's important. How was your upbringing? Tell me more about yourself and your life experiences. I grew up in Leeds, in the north of England. My dad, well, my mum was an NHS nurse. My father used to deliver cars. By the mid-90s, my father had floated a company on the Mumbai Stock Exchange, which made dyes, specifically the colour copper thalassite dye blue. I'm an only child. I grew up, I was raised by my grandmother and my uncles and aunts in Leeds. And I had a very happy and fortunate childhood with very many people in my family to care for me, look after me and love and adore me. So I had a, a, an incredibly fortunate childhood. I am the chairman of the Lumbar Trust, which supports widows and orphans around the world. So do look up the Lumbar Trust. Have a look at look, links in the bio if you want to see my LinkedIn and you can follow me there. Amanda Baron, hmm, brother, I've been making around 50k a month from my strategy. How can that be? I, don't, don't, I think he's replying to someone else. You start invest in your, oh God, who are the top hedge funds in London, in your opinion? Oh, very good question. Winton Capital. Oh, by the way, if you want to get into hedge funds, I mean, maybe apply to some of them. Brevin Howard, Winton Capital, Aspect, AHL. Those are all the top ones. I mean, I, I like the ones which have got the, the, the a trend following. So the trend following hedge funds. Winton's in Hammersmith, would you believe? Brevin Howard is in Baker Street. So I'd say apply to those, the ones you might not even have heard of. What are my hobbies? My four-year-old son, I'm playing crazy golf at the moment, and I'm rather good at crazy golf. Do I have hobbies? I used to have the hobby of writing books. I've written about 18. I like cycling. I don't know. I don't know if I have hobbies. Uh, I just love working. So... Is that your house? Oh, God, I want to say, yeah, yeah, this is where I hang out all the time. How to deal with co-worker presenting your ideas to their own to your boss. Every bloody time it happens, doesn't it? I would suggest the line of... The line of control... Sort of the line of management uh, to go up that, so go to the boss and put it in a in a way or confront the confront the worker on it. The other way to do it is sometimes, if you want to be really nasty, is put something incorrect in there and let them attribute it to themselves and you know give them enough rope to hang themselves with do you think working in a in back office in a hedge fund is a good place to start as a graduate i think anywhere which you know gets your foot through the door is a good place yeah i think the back office in a hedge fund is a good place to start because you'll learn stuff and you've got it on your cv that's the way i would do it ba 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 any advice to make a switch from working in a corporate job to doing your own thing and plan plan the the have a look at tech to great.com tech and then the number two great.com what i would say is there's a lot of resources up at there including business plans how to set them up excel spreadsheets and how to do financial forecasts and all of those get all that planned when you wake up at four in the morning and are so excited about the business you've decided to go into that's when you jump otherwise stay in a job okay that's what i'd say only when you're so excited and it won't come as a flash of lightning i was once told by one of my mentors a chap called Apuf Bagri. He said it won't come as a flash of lightning. It'll be incremental until it's big enough. And Tony Robbins once said something very useful and, and really good, which was, if you're not excited about it, it's because you haven't made the dream big enough. So just keep on adding zeros until you get excited about it. And then you might want to, at four in the morning, work on it. Now, I used to work on my business plans at four in the morning, which meant that told me this is the right thing to do. Where can I find the skill set link in your bio? If you read through my bio on LinkedIn, and the links are in the bio, so links, you know what I mean by links in bio, don't I? You, you look on TikTok at where the bio is, and you click on it, and that's the links in the bio. And you look on my LinkedIn, you'll see the skills, but you'll also see the qualifications, and, and you can work, you can put two and two together on there. So le uh, let me put it this way, put another way, learn how to use LinkedIn. It's a really good, clever resource for spying on what works and what doesn't and all the rest of it. And I'd say LinkedIn's rather good at all that. So, what else? 
pride input on building a board of directors when you are a young individual. Why do you need them? Why do you need the board of directors? I wouldn't want to be a director and take directors' responsibilities and liabilities. What you probably mean is advisors. And advisors can start off as friends and family. Because they don't have legal liabilities, you could just cold write to people and say, this is my business plan pitch deck, and I'd take it from there, and that would help. Have a, as I said, have a look at the links in the bio. Is there a lot of money in asset and wealth management? There is, both by definition in terms of what we do. Let me tell you how it works. There's trillions under management, and in the hedge fund industry, we charge 2% of the assets that we manage. But more importantly, we also get 20% of the profits we make. It is stupid money. It means you sit around on a swimming pool waiting for Microsoft's price to go up or PayPal's and you earn money for doing it. So it's in one sense soul destroying because it's unfair, it's unjust. It's totally unjust that there are children dying around the world and you've got stupid money, which is why people like Bill Gates are looking for solutions to the next you know, COVID vaccine or whatever. So make sure you do lots of charitable work as well because when you're earning stupid money, like I said, I'm a teetotal vegetarian and I don't party. So what am I going to spend the bloody money on? I'm chairman of the Lumbar Trust. Have a look at it. L-O-O-M-B-A. It supports widows and orphans. It's a registered charity and our patrons include, well, people you probably dislike, Tony Blair and David Cameron. So there you go. <laughs> but, <laughs> but it supports widows and orphans. Have a look at the website and, and that helps. Thoughts on high frequency trading. Need a lot of money to do it. HFG trading. There's some great books. I love them. I finished my front office hedge fund interpretive advice and getting more internships. Just what you did to get the first one. Do you know Suresh Patel from Leicester? Yeah, I know Suresh Patel from Leicester. What a coincidence. Do you know his brother Mitesh Patel? I also know Preeti Patel from London as well. Active fund management is dead. Yeah, I agree. It's been dead for a while. Active long only fund management. Alternative asset management isn't. Listen, I better go. It's turning up to 8 p.m. here. And I better go. You've all been a, you've been a great crowd, as they say. Thank you very much. Have a look at the links in the bio and follow for more. The links in the bio give you a lot of free information on careers, entrepreneurship, how to raise money, how to build a business plan, how to evaluate a business, all of those things. So have a look at those links. And as I said before, you've been a great audience. What a great place to talk to people and teach them somewhere like this. So thank you all for keeping me company in the pool. My wife and child are in London while I'm out here. I was actually working. I was delivering sort of a way day. Let's put it that way. Liz Truss or Rishi Sunak. I'm asked that a lot. I'm going to leave that one for now. Do you know Vikas Shah MBE? I do. He's a professor, Professor Vikas Shah. Yeah. I know of him. I think he's based in Manchester and he was part of our Manchester tie, the Indus Entrepreneurs Board. So have a look at TIE.org, TIE.org, which is an entrepreneurship organization and it's phenomenal. How do you think working in, pa in passive is the place to be? I don't know what that means. Ask Preeti to be nicer, please. Everybody says that about Preeti. But speaking of which, on a more broader issue of brand, personal branding and image, there's a book I read that my uncle gave me when I was a lot younger, when I was at university, and it was really helpful. It's called The Images of Power. The Images of Power. I have a read of it. And that, it was a book about sort of personal branding. It's very useful, and it analyzed politicians and the like. So do have a look at the images of power. I think you'll like it. It's, it's really useful. And so many questions. I don't, I don't want to go. What makes people wiser and more intelligent? Experience and a few kick in the nuts will help make you wiser and more intelligent. I think reading reading certainly should make you wiser and i'd say reading books on stoicism should help if you have a faith then you know i find reading books about my faith help me become a lot wiser i think meditation can help become a lot wiser i think empathy is critical empathy is absolutely critical and how to be empathetic is is difficult i think some of those ted talks can be and then mulling things over not just reading it but mulling it over as well that can assist tremendously as well now follow the host how do you think working so anyway last call do uh, follow for more and have a look at those links in the bio as well it depends on amc and gme short squeezes i don't I'm, i've i've been following it. i've been reading it out of interest but uh, it's amazing what the uh, what the retail managed to do on those two i mean why the hell hedge fund managers were in such illiquid come well in the case of 
GameStop illiquid companies, God knows, you're really asking for trouble. But you get hubris in my industry. You get people with arrogance in my industry who think they're infallible, but they're not. There's black swans out there. There's the right-hand curve of the bell curve. There's tails which are fatter. If you don't know what I'm talking about, look, look it up. What do you think of Andrew Aziz's book, How to Day Trade for a Living? Uh, I don't know it. Opinions on Rich Dad, Poor Dad. It's done well for him. It's made him lots of money. Opinions on Andrew Tate and his pyramid scheme. <laughs> I don't know who he is, but when you say pyramid scheme, that's a bad thing, isn't it? Well, in terms of trading psychology and trading strategy and psychology, what would be the most important tips? Have a look at a website by a Nobel Prize winning individual who I've written much about in my Financial Times columns and in my books. The website's ifa.tv and they've got so much amazing free information about trading psychology, ifa.tv. And the person behind it I've been writing about for about 20 years and he won the Nobel Prize in economics about four years ago really outstanding it is are we going to get into a recession i don't know i hope not but i suspect we might fall into it what what gives me hope is the inflation is actually very much at the moment due to people spending and it's difficult to see how with so much spending you get a recession at the same time in this market environment so i think we might avert it especially when you look at corporate profitability it's so much cash sloshing around how to make more powerful relationships, companies or people. The research that I found for my TEDx talk on making more powerful relationships was that when you have relationships with people who have another interest, you know, the golf club or religion like city Hindus, city Sikhs, city Christians, whatever, you make more powerful relationships. The Conservative Party, the Labour Party, you will have more powerful relationships because you have another interest outside of one interest. So that helps very much. In, in doing that. I don't know how long I've done this now. It, it's uh, it, Any jobs going? Yeah, there's gazillions, clearly, because really your question is, where do I look to find jobs? And I'd say, as I said earlier, follow the money. Wh who's getting funded? Look at Crowdcube. Who's got funded there? That'll be it. Make it a win-win situation. I don't know what that one is. Where am I? I'm in Spain. I was giving a summer school on investing. Again, have a look at the links in my bio and you'll see that and uh, two day and then I was here for a friend's 50th and a business partner's boat trip as well so that was nice so there was a lot done in those well in the past week and I'm back in London tomorrow as well so what oh, what do you think of fertilizer stocks well they should be good because we need more food but they might be overpriced and that's always the problem isn't it how do I work out valuation discount cash flows are good have a look at a company called Wall simply Wall Street the discount cash flows are good. They're good for that. And for price earnings ratios, have a look at my own. Have a look at ShareScope. ShareScope. There should be some links in my bio on that. It's the UK's largest private investor software company. And there's an Alpish Patel special edition of it. Do you have any employment opportunities? We're not hiring at the moment, partly because our business is largely automated increasingly. Hence why I'm here. So we're not looking to hire humans. Hi, Arpesh. Thoughts on starting a career in BlackRock ETF division? It seems a good one. I mean, ETFs are growing. But if you're looking at finance generally and what pays well and a big brand name, I'd look at all of them, not just one. And I would all look at what is it you actually want. Is it the brand name? Is it the cash? Is it future growth? And I'd expand. I think people, what they do is they, they apply to too few companies. They think their options are only one or two. And they're not. They have many options. And I'd go for as many of those as possible. So that's my view on that. Fintox stocks for the long term investment for long term investment. I don't I analyze stocks using a formula called VGI value growth income and add to that cash flow or croaky cash return on capital invested. So if they tick all of those, so I don't do top down as in what sector, I do bottom up. Companies are factories for making money. I don't care what they make and what business they do if they can make money. And that means cash return on capital invested is critical to me. They need to be in the top quartile for that because Goldman Sachs and Deutsche Bank found that companies in the top quartile generate 30% per annum. If you hold, if you change your batch every 12 months of the top quartile by Crokey, cash return on capital invested, look up Crokey, cash return on capital invested. So that's central to how I invest. And it's been a secret formula I stole from Deutsche Bank and Goldman Sachs, steal from the rest. They give that, they use that for their wealthiest clients. So I use that myself as well. Jane Street Quantum, I don't know who she is. Well, that's my goal too. Let's see what can work. What, uh, what do you think about NFTs? NFTs to me are obviously modern art. 
and I know nothing about modern art. I know some modern art keeps its value and increases over the years, and others doesn't and doesn't increase over the years. So that's what I'd say about modern art. Let's see, what else is there here? I stayed way longer than I anticipated, but I don't mind. Any other questions I've not answered, feel free to put them back on. It depends on Peter Jones. My wife's stunning. Absolutely stunning. I know what you're thinking. Middle-aged bloke, hedge fund manager with a stunning wife. God, you're such a cliche, Alpesh. I know, but I don't mind. What can I say? Do men perform better than women in your industry? No, they don't. Women, um, it's been shown, are better at investing than men because women tend to hold positions and not panic, whereas women, whereas men tend to be over traders. There's a lot of work done on this uh, academic research by Terence Odian in particular. Is this Tuscany? It's not. I love Tuscany, but it's not Tuscany. It is Spain. Croic cash return on the, so croci c r o c i c r o c i. It's a really good formula to know when it comes to investing. It's probably the most important one. But my links in my bag a lot of free stuff. Thoughts on CFD trading? Seventy percent of people lose money because they don't realize that companies are more volatile than they realize in the first twenty days. So they get margin calls and wiped out. Do you want to know how volatile companies are? Have a look at Wolfram Alpha. Wolfram Alpha and put in a stock name, and you'll be able to see a, a bell curve distribution of volatility. C R O C I C R O C I. That's croaky, and that's cash return on capital invested. What Deutsche Bank found was companies in the top quartile by cash return on capital invested. Imagine a, 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 an ice cream, uh, sorry, a sweet company which can make has a machinery which makes sweets. They don't need to change that machinery, but those sweets keep getting sold for a hundred years. Kids keep coming buying those sweets, but the machine never needs changing. That's cash return on capital invested, which is very high. Unlike an airline, which keeps needing to replace the bloody wings on a plane. So, what business would you want? You want the sweet maker, not the airline. Okay. So that's why Warren Buffett invests in C's candy and screwed up when he invested in bloody airlines. Any alternatives to CFDs? Yes. Two times leverage exchange traded funds. There's lots of risk involved. Have a look at leveragedshares.com, leveragedshares.com. So two times leverage ETFs, exchange traded funds, which have embedded in them the leverage. And so probably going to be a lot safer than a CFD. But look at the risk warnings on that. Massive risk, massive risk, massive risk. Peter Jones, lovely chap. Yeah, like I said, I was on a panel with him in India. Lovely, lovely, lovely chap. Are you planning to be a billionaire? Yeah, that was the plan originally, because I couldn't think of another goal in my industry, because it's finance. So I thought, well, what goal is that? Oh, billions. So the idea is to get a billion dollars of assets under management, or in my software company, get a billion dollar valuation. So yeah, I am planning it, but I don't know what I'd do with the money. Give it all away, I guess. Can you be my personal mentor? I'm sorry, I'm not taking on new mentees, but you know, pitch to me. Look at the links in the bio, and if you've got a strong case, I'll try and help. But I won't be able to be a mentor, as in full-time mentor, but I will be able to hopefully open doors. I also, for people who follow me, you know, if you look at the links in the bio again, if you look at my Telegram channel, I send invites to things that I do in Parliament, events I'm hosting. So that's probably a good time to meet up with me and, 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 and join in. So if you follow my Telegram channel, all completely free, then do have a look at that. Listen, I've really got to go now because my wife really is waiting i might try and do another one later on if i can i love these because you guys are just wonderful people so thank you all very much